Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about a nice technique that is useful when you need to FFR a hard-to-wire lesion. The same technique is also useful to easily introduce uh, buddy wires. So we have a 80-year-old woman who presented to the ER with uh, rapid palpitations. Uh, other than a calcium channel blocker for high blood pressure and a low-dose statin, uh, she otherwise uh, takes no meds. In the ER, she uh, looked a little short of breath, but she denied chest pain. Uh, she was found to be in a rapid atrial fibrillation and presumably a new diagnosis. She was admitted to the floor uh, where she spontaneously converted uh, to normal sinus rhythm. Troponins remained negative, but the echo uh, showed an EF of 40 to 45% with mild uh, global hypokinesis. So she was referred to cath, and cath showed that the LED and circumflex have mild disease, and we see the RCA here, uh, which is uh, quite tortuous uh, with a segment of disease in its midsection. So what do we do with this? She does have some dyspnea, but is otherwise has no clear angina. Do we stent this, or should we FFR? So we decide to FFR. But this vessel is quite a bit tortuous and probably tricky to wire. And despite what your favorite rep keeps on insisting, FFR wires are at best uh, difficult to maneuver. And I'm doubtful that any FFR wire could easily uh, get through this vessel. So how are we going to do this? Well, we could use a workhorse wire uh, uh, to first get across the lesion. But then what? You can't just use a microcatheter to exchange your workhorse for the FFR wire because you have to take the FFR wire out of the body after you normalize it and then insert it back into that microcatheter. But the problem is that once you take the FFR wire out of the body, the normalization could go off and you're back to square one. The FFR wire would need to be renormalized. So is there another way to do this? Is there a way that you can more easily navigate the FFR wire across a tough lesion? Well, um, there is actually a fairly simple way uh, to get your FFR wire through a tough lesion. You'll need uh, three pieces of equipment to do it. You'll need your favorite workhorse wire, a long 300 centimeter FFR wire, and a dual lumen uh, catheter. Now, I know, I know, uh, many labs uh, don't carry dedicated uh, dual lumen catheters. Our lab doesn't either. But most thrombectomy catheters actually work pretty well for this purpose. So this is how it's done. Uh, step one, you wire the lesion uh, using your uh, favorite workhorse wire. Step two, uh, once you've crossed the lesion with your workhorse wire, you backload the back end of the wire into the RX port of your thrombectomy catheter. You leave the thrombectomy catheter on the table for now and do not advance it into the guide yet. Step three, you take your long FFR wire and insert it into the aspiration port of the thrombectomy catheter. So now you have the FFR wire in the thrombectomy port and your workhorse wire in the RX port. Again, uh, don't advance the thrombectomy catheter into the guide just yet. Step four, uh, advance your long FFR wire into the proximal part of the vessel, proximal to the lesion, and then normalize pressures like you normally would. Again, you keep, at this point, uh, keep uh, the thrombectomy catheter outside the guide. Step five, after you've normalized the pressures, you then advance the thrombectomy catheter into the vessel over both the workhorse wire and the FFR wire. Now, the tip of the FFR wire is just in the proximal part of the vessel. So once the thrombectomy catheter is advanced into the vessel, it will go, quickly go beyond the tip of the FFR wire, but will still ride on the workhorse wire. So you keep advancing the thrombectomy catheter over that workhorse wire until it is well across the lesion into the distal part of the vessel. Step six, once you've advanced the thrombectomy catheter well across the lesion and into the distal part of the vessel, you then advance your FFR wire through the aspiration lumen all the way to the end of the thrombectomy catheter, which is now sitting in the distal part of the vessel. Step seven, um, with the FFR wire and the workhorse wire now positioned beyond the lesion uh, in the distal part of the vessel, you then uh, carefully walk back uh, the thrombectomy catheter over both wires until the thrombectomy catheter is completely outside the body. 
There is usually more than enough length on a 300 centimeter FFR wire to accommodate the combined lengths of the thrombectomy catheter, which is around 140 centimeters, the guide catheter, which is typically around 100 centimeters, and the vessel of interest. Uh, finally, step eight, uh, you perform FFR uh, with your adenosine infusion. Uh, you can optionally remove the workhorse wire first uh, if you are uh, concerned uh, about uh, pseudo lesions uh, caused uh, by multiple wires. And that's it. Um, this technique uh, can be generalized as a, a general technique uh, to pass additional wires uh, next to a workhorse wire, which is already in place. Uh, so it can be used to pass any number of buddy wires uh, in tough vessels. All right, so back to our patient. Uh, we uh, wired the lesion uh, relatively easily with a pearl water. Uh, we did not have a dual lumen catheter, but instead we used a priority one thrombectomy catheter uh, to pass a 300 centimeter pressure wire, FFR wire, um, over the pearl water into the distal RCA. FFR in this case was 0 0.71, uh, so uh, we decided to proceed with PCI. The uh, intervention was uh, relatively straightforward. We uh, wired both the RCA and the RV marginal branch and pre-dilated the RCA with a, um, a 2.75 millimeter balloon. After pre-dilation, the RV marginal branch actually went down. So we were thankful that there was a wire in place already. Uh, we dilated the RV marginal branch with a 2.0 millimeter balloon to reestablish flow. After stenting and post dilation, uh, we have a, a satisfactory uh, final angiographic result in both the RCA and the RV marginal branch. Uh, you'll notice that there was a balloon dissection in the mid RCA uh, that is now nicely covered by the stent. Okay, uh, take home messages. Uh, dual lumen catheters, uh, or the poor man's version, uh, thrombectomy catheters, uh, can be very useful uh, to pass second wires uh, next to workhorse wires uh, in hard to wire vessels. The uh, technique uh, can be used uh, to pass FFR wires across tough vessels that you've been able to wire with your workhorse. Uh, similar techniques uh, can be uh, used to pass buddy wires across hard to wire lesions, and it can also be useful uh, to, pass, to pass additional wires across uh, uh, freshly stented vessels. Thank you for watching.